hold me now in the hands that created the heavens find me now where the grace runs as deep as your scars you pulled me from the clay you set me on a rock called me by Lifted up in my knees, now it's all for your glory that I might stand with more reasons to sing than to fear. You pulled me from the clay, you set me on a rock, called me by your name, and made my heart. Here I stand, high and surrender, I need you now. Hold my heart, now and forever, my soul cries out. Once I was broken, but you love my whole heart through. Sin has no hold on me, cause your grace holds me. And that grace owns the ground where the grave did, where all my shame remains left for dead in your wake. You crashed those age old gates, you left no stone unturned, you stepped out of that grave. Shoulder Here I stand, high and surrender, I need you now. Hold my heart, now and forever, my soul cries out. Cause once I was broken, but you love my whole heart through. Sin has no hold on me, cause your grace holds me. So here I stand, high and surrender, I need you now. Hold my heart, now and forever, my soul cries out, cause once I was broke. Your grace holds me now. 
your grace holds me now. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. We are so glad that you are joining us, worshiping from your home as we worship here. A few announcements this morning. Join us tonight for worship on the lawn, on the north lawn, right behind me at 6.30. Um, if there is a weather situation, we will put it on social media and on our website by 5 p.m. if there is a cancellation. So be ready for that. Also want to invite you to join us in our next round of online community groups. Uh, our groups over the summer were spectacular. Uh, God was moving in those groups, strengthening faith, encouraging us through relationships and drawing us closer to him. We'd love for you, if you've not yet joined a group to do so, you can visit our website to do that and there'll be more information coming in the coming weeks. Also on our website, you can sign up for and learn about Pastor Randy's Zoom Bible study. He'll start on the 16th at 8 p.m., focusing on the fundamentals of our faith and how we can defend them uh, if anyone asks us. It's called Weighing the Evidence for Our Faith. Uh, I encourage you to look at that. Also, we're going to be sharing more information about our protocol for indoor worship that starts on the 13th. So that's next Sunday at our 8.30 service. Uh, we are going to continue this live stream at 10 o'clock as well as live streaming the 830 service uh, and drive up communion. So uh, all those things will continue. We're just going to start also having people in the room for that 830 service. So uh, for this service, we encourage you to use the chat room to let us know where you are and how we can continue to pray for you throughout the week and as we live out our lives of faith together. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, continue with an opening prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we invite you into this space as we gather to worship you. We may be scattered across the community and indeed across the world, but we're united in faith. We pray that you would draw us deeply into our worship today uh, and inspire us through your word. Fill us with your spirit. We pray this, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
We'll continue our worship by giving back to God some of what he's given to us through our tithes and offerings. If you'd like to text in your offering today, send the amount to the number 84321. You can also edit and update or start online giving by going to our website, fulllifeinchrist.org offering, or bring by your offering or mail it to 111 West Olive in Arlington Heights, 60004. Friends, would you take a moment now and share with those people you're worshiping with or think about on your own, when have you ever felt truly alone? Thanks for sharing. Maybe you've experienced that feeling of hopelessness or alone or lost. Maybe you're experiencing those thoughts and those feelings right now. Friends, I want you to know you are not alone. There is a God who loves you, who sent his son to die for you and sends to you the spirit of the living God to refresh and renew you. He promises this uh, in Psalm 103. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Friends, there is hope and restoration. There is healing from the pit. So if you have been in that place or if you are in that place right now, reach out to someone, let them know. You can also uh, go to our website, fulllifeinchrist.org, and there you can find some resources on suicide or depression, ways to help you and ways that you can reach out. Let's continue in our time of worship to now as we think about times where we have been alone. Let's hear from God's word, uh, the Bible reading Job uh, chapter 3, uh, read today by Bob Cole. Good morning. Today's reading is from the book of Job, the English Standard Version. Chapter 3, verses 1 to 7 and verses 11 to 13. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. And Job said, Let the day perish on which I was born, and the night that said, A man is conceived. Let that day be darkness. May God above not seek it, nor light shine upon it. Let gloom and deep darkness claim it. Let clouds dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. That night, let thick darkness seize it. Let it not rejoice among the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Behold, let that night be barren. Let no joyful cry enter it. Why did I not die at birth, come out from the womb and expire? Why did the knees receive me? Or why the breasts that I should nurse? For then I would have lain down and been quiet. I would have slept. Then I would have been at rest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's join together in confessing our sins to God so that we can receive his forgiveness. Lord God, God, we we confess confess how often we stumble stumble as your people. people. You call us in this world to love all people as ourselves, to speak up for those who have no voice, to look to the needs of others, and to see all neighbors as better than ourselves. Yet we acknowledge that we have been more lethargic than listening, callous than compassionate, judgmental than just, selfish than serving. Forgive our sins and work in us by your Holy Spirit to do justice, to to love kindness, and and to walk walk humbly humbly with you. In In Jesus' Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. God hears and answers your prayers, and he declares to you his love and that you are forgiven. 
And so it's my privilege to say to you that you are forgiven in the name of Jesus of all of your sins. Go in his peace, forgiven, restored, and made new. Amen. Amen. Let's continue now with our next song, Good, Good Father. stories of what they think you're like I heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleasing that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am oh and I see many searching for answers far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you because we know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us you are perfect in all of your ways oh you're perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to I, I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable I, I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love love of love Good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am. Hi friends, I really need your help today. I lost my sheep and I can't find him. Um, I think he's here in the back of the garden, but I can't see him anywhere. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and then would you help me find my sheep? please? Okay. W when you see my sheep, just, just shout out, okay? Okay. I am going to go really slowly and I, I think, I think he's going to be in here in the flowers somewhere. So if you see him, please shout out uh, that you found my sheep because I just do not know where to find him. Oh, please shout out if you see my sheep, please just shout out. Oh my goodness. What? 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 You saw him? Where did you see him? Over here? No, no. Back which way? That, the other way? Okay. All right, I'm looking. Shout out if you see him. Shout out. Oh, here? Where? No, I... Oh, 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 there you are. Oh, there's my one. 
my sheep. Oh, there he is. Friends, thank you so much for helping me find my lost sheep. Are you glad to be back with me? Oh, he is so glad. Look at him nodding his head. Thank you so much. You know, this reminds me of a Bible story that Jesus told his disciples. It's called the parable of the lost sheep. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and leave, and one of them wanders off, will he not leave the other 99 sheep and go to the hills and look for the one that has wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing to let any of these be lost. Friends, sometimes we wander off. Sometimes we feel lost and alone. Maybe we feel helpless or we feel hopeless. And I want you to know if you ever have those feelings, you are not alone that the God who created you, the God who named you, the God who loves you and redeems you will always come looking for you because you are his beloved sheep. Have a great day, friends, and remember, you are loved by Jesus. Good morning, friends. One of the vacations that I remember when I was a young child was when our family drove from Michigan out to California. And there I saw something that I had never seen before, and that was our family was able to drive our car right through the base of a giant tree. It was actually a redwood, and they even built a small house out of that redwood. You know, I read since then that in Sequoia, the National Forest, there was one tree that was particularly known and even had a name. They called it the Dyerville Giant. This tree stood over 360 feet high. That's a 30-story building. Its circumference was 17 feet all the way through. If you took a measuring tape around it, it would take at least 52 feet of tape to wrap it around. Estimates are that this tree weighed a million pounds and was about 2,000 years old. And one day in March of 1991, this tree fell of natural causes. And when this tree hit the ground, the impact was so large that people felt it 10 miles away. And someone who was much closer, within a mile of it, thought it was a train wreck. We are talking today about something that feels a lot like that. The impact upon families and friends and congregations feels like a giant sequoia crashing down. And it is felt for years afterward. In fact, I've had at least three experiences around such tragic loss in my life, the loss of a human life by suicide. I remember in high school when my mom told me that the neighbor three doors down had taken his life with a firearm in their small shed that was in their backyard. And then later in high school, when I was a junior or senior, our church had a basketball league, and one of the youth that I shared time with down low under the boards, his girlfriend broke up, and he went out to a country road and also used a firearm to end his life, and that's probably the most vivid funeral that I remember, just this vacancy that this person was gone. And then when I was a pastor in western New York for 12 years, a relative of one of our church families ended his life as he had battled cancer for three years. And I can tell you, feeling like this giant redwood just came crashing down on all of the people who were close. 
studies show that in our country, tragically, this number is continuing on the rise. That the CDC reports from 1999 to 2018, the percentage of suicides in America actually went up by 35%. It's now the second leading cause of death for Americans, 10 to 34 years old. Most of them for women occur in the age group of 45 to 54, and for men it is those who are 65 and older. Also has impacted our military. In 2018, 385 service people took their own lives. It's the highest since they started recording the numbers in 2001. And it's also reported that on average, one veteran takes his or her life every 22 minutes in this country. As a whole, the CDC said that 2018 had over 48,000 Americans commit suicide and an additional 1.4 million attempts. And some of the most tragic news about this is that the U.S. ranks about 30th around the globe for suicide rate. That on an average, nearly one million people, or one every 40 seconds, takes their lives somewhere in this world. And in the past 45 years, that number, too, has seen an increase of about 65%. As I reflect on my experience in life and even in my ministry and being in the wake of a suicide, there's just this incredibly thick emotional fog with all sorts of human feelings and emotions going on, feelings of numbness and shock and denial. How could this be? It just can't be. Feelings of anger and shame. How could our loved one do this? This doesn't reflect the family values that we were raised with. And even feelings of guilt and, and self-blame. I should have known. I should have called. I should have visited. I should have recognized those signs. Suicide is another curve that we need to flatten. And so as we turn to Scripture this morning, though we will not find the word suicide in the Bible, it has much to speak on this matter. In fact, the Bible clearly records six different suicides. Abimelech was wounded in war, and he ordered his armor bearer to thrust him with his sword. King Saul, when he was wounded in war, fell upon his sword, and then his armor bearer also fell upon his sword. Ahithophel hung himself when Absalom did not listen to his counsel. Zimri set himself afire when his rebellion against King Asa failed. And in the New Testament, Judas hung himself when he realized that he had betrayed innocent blood. As Ecclesiastes says, there is no new sin under the sun. There are even some real surprising names. In fact, what do these names have in common? Moses, Job, Elijah, and Jeremiah. Did you know that each one of these men, each one of these heroes of the Bible, either cursed the day that they were born and wished they had never been, or they even asked God to end their earthly life? And so as we look at their stories, as we look at their lives, two things stand out. Number one... That even for us, even for people of God, there are times in life when it is so difficult, when it seems so overwhelming, when it seems so unbearable, that death seems like the only possible escape. 
that for all of these heroes in the faith, their lives, their ministry had reached such a low point that they despaired being alive. And many of us have those feelings too when life really gets going tough. But the second thing that their lives, their stories give witness to is this, that in their darkest moments, each one of them turned to the Lord his God and cried out. And God answered every single one of them and gave them exactly what they needed for them to persevere under trial. When Moses cried to God and asked him to end his life, God raised up 70 other leaders to help Moses carry the load of those grumpy, complaining Israelites. When Job cried out to the Lord from his distress, God used it to draw him into a deeper and more whole understanding of who his God was. When Elijah cried out to the Lord to end his life, God sent an angel who gave Elijah food and gave him drink and gave him the rest he needed so that he had the strength for the journey. And when Jeremiah called out to the Lord from his despair, God invited Jeremiah to leave his wasteland of doubt and to trust in him. Though these faced great trials, endured hardships and injustices, every one of them, with the help of God, fought the good fight of the faith. They kept their faith and they received the crown of eternal life. Here's what I want us to learn. All of them voiced their honest feelings and complaints to God. But they also left their life decision with God. They left it in his hands. Even when they asked God to take their life, when they wished they would have never been born, rather than acting upon it themselves, they still left it for God to decide. And in every instance in his goodness and his faithfulness, he gave what each one needed to go through the valley of the shadow of death to his abundant life. And this God will do the same with you. And so how do we work with our God? How does he work in us and through us to flatten this tragic curve? Three things come to my mind. Number one, realize that every day is spiritual warfare. This life is not a joke. Our time here is not a game. We have a real spiritual enemy who is among us every day to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus also said that we are up against the father of lies. Imagine with me, if you would, for a second that the devil is having a yard sale. And at this yard sale, the devil has a vast array of tools, all with different prices. Tools such as hatred, jealousy, deceit, lying, and pride, all at expensive prices. And yet off to the side as we're looking at his yard sale, we notice there is one tool that has more visible wear than any of the others, and it also is marked with a much higher price. And when the devil is asked about that tool and its price, he explains, it's my most useful tool. When I can't bring my prey down with any of these other tools, I use the tool of discouragement. Because so few people realize that it belongs to me. My 
Martin Luther said this about suicide and spiritual warfare. He said, I do not have the opinion that suicide are certainly to be damned. My reason is that they do not wish to kill themselves, but are overcome by the power of the devil. What about you? Has Satan been working you over with one of his tools? Has he been filling your mind with his lies? Has he been beating you down in here? Last month, the CDC reported another tragic survey. They asked 5,400 young American adults how many of them have contemplated suicide in the last month. 25% of young Americans, 18 to 24, said just in this past month from this pandemic, they have felt the urge to commit suicide. Friends, here are just some of the lies that Satan wants you to believe. He wants you to buy into the lies such as not just it won't get better, but he wants you to believe no matter what you are in, it can't get any better. He wants you to believe that your situation is hopeless, and so are you. He wants you to believe that you have failed so many times in your life that you are a failure. He wants you to believe that you cannot be forgiven for that sin, that mess up, that mistake, especially the number of times that you have backslid into it. He wants you to believe that your family will be too embarrassed of you when they find out. He wants you to believe that it is more than you can ever face or handle and he wants you to look at yourself and say that you and your life are simply worthless. Is there any wonder in the short prayer that Jesus taught us? Just seven short petitions that he ended the climax of the prayer was the seventh petition, but deliver us from the evil one. Jesus knows firsthand who we are up against every single day and what the evil one is capable of. Yet in giving us the seventh petition of the Lord's Prayer, deliver us from the evil ones, he knows the importance and power of that holy ask. Not only is our battle with suicide a spiritual battle, but we also flatten the curve when we believe the gospel ourselves. Let me say this clearly, whoever you are, whatever you have been through, no matter what's been said to you or done to you or how many times it's been repeated, God is inviting you to believe the gospel yourself. That as long as there is air in your lungs and blood coursing through your veins, there is always incredible hope in Jesus Christ, your Lord. You are the reason that Jesus came down here. And you are the reason why Jesus one day is coming back. He came the first time to bear all of your sin and guilt and shame and brokenness. And he nailed it to a cross, and he rose three days later to leave it there. He came to redeem you and me from 
all the problems of this life so that he could promise us, he could assure us of an amazingly grand eternity in his home above. Again and again, this God tells you in his word that you are loved, you are treasured, From eternity, he has had a plan for your life. And at just the right moment in history, he brought you into being. He created you to play a small yet important role in his master plan. God does not make mistakes. And that means neither are you. Believe the gospel yourself. That Jesus loves you. That he smiles on you. That he rejoices over you with singing. And he's coming back a second time so that he can live with you forever. After Jesus told Martha that he was the resurrection and the life, he looked at Martha and he asked her, do you believe this? And Martha said, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Jesus is asking every one of you that same question now. Do you believe this? Do you believe the gospel? That he is the Christ, the son of God, who has come into this world to pay our penalty so he could live with us forever. Martha answered, yes, Lord. How about you? Believe the gospel yourself. The final key, I believe, to flattening this horrific curve is to be a hope monger. A study uh, produced an article called Dying of Despair by psychiatrist Aaron Cariotti. And he points out that in 10 years of research, it concluded that one factor more than any other is a precursor to committing suicide. And the one factor was not how sick an individual was. It was not how much pain he or she was in. It was not how many symptoms did they exhibit or were they rich or poor. The number one factor contributing to suicide was that own person's sense of hopelessness. We can live without many things. But the human spirit cannot live without hope. We have that hope. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope is alive. Hope is on the throne. Hope is lording. It is Lord over my life and everything in your life. Peter says we have been born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This world needs you to be a hope monger and take that hope of Jesus Christ with you everywhere you go. As we together are aware of the signs, as we are always listening with loving ears, as we don't argue with people who are contemplating it, we do not debate or act shocked. 
We offer to help them reach out to a professional who can help. We pray with them in the name of Jesus. We pray over them in the name of Jesus. We point them again and again to God's promises in Scripture. And we are the presence. We are the bullhorn of Jesus Christ shouting hope into their life. Because of Jesus Christ, there is always hope. And so as we go forth, hope mongers of our Savior, every life that is saved, every act that is halted and surrenders to hope flattens the curve a little more. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the opportunity we have to gather and worship you. We thank you for the ways in which you have blessed us, a wonderful summer season, even though different because of COVID. We thank you for bringing us to this day and pray that as we gather with family and friends, that you would bless our celebrations, you would bless our rest on this Labor Day weekend. And we pray that you would continue to draw us close together and close to you. We pray that you would intercede on behalf of our nation, its rulers, and all those who lead, who make and administer and enforce laws. Bring peace and healing to those who are struggling, especially those dealing with a, the thought of suicide. We pray that you would let them know that they're not alone and that you can give them victory over this as well, and that you choose to do so through the connections we have with one another in community. God, we pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones who have died by suicide, that you would remind them that you are victorious even over this, and that you would comfort them in their sorrow. We pray for healing for those who are sick, protection for those who are in harm's way, and we pray your blessing upon all people everywhere. In all of these, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're so glad you were able to worship with us today on this Labor Day weekend. Let's send you now with a blessing. If you want to put out your hands at home to receive the blessing, it's a great way to use your body. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in one last song. I am Jesus' little lamb, hymn 740. <laughs>
Within your house forever. 